<laughs> so, hello everyone. Um, uh, this is really good that I'm going last because I think this, um, what I'm talking about here, we can think about how this might apply to the previous three talks. Um, uh, this idea of having uh, heuristics for interactive machine learning. And so um, this was research I did uh, last summer at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. This is a Department of Energy Research Lab um, located in eastern Washington. Um, while there, I was doing research on uh, SharpSore, which is an interactive uh, deep learning application. And so SharpSore is a web application designed to aid analysts working with large sets of unlabeled uh, image data. And so the use case for SharpSore is one wherein the users do not always know what they might be looking for ahead of time. Um, so rather, um, they need to be able to generate insights on the fly based off of a given um, image corpus. And so we could be talking about thousands, maybe millions of images potentially. Um, and these images are unlabeled, right? Uh, so this is raw image data. And so for this reason, um, SharpSore as a system couldn't rely on traditional sort of multi-label uh, classification techniques, uh, rather to achieve sort of this dynamic classification that it would need to um, enable, uh, the system relies on a combination of uh, size agnostic uh, classification techniques, uh, pre-clustering that we were talking about earlier, and a uh, few shot learning techniques. And so this is an example of SharpSore, of the, of the user flow. So here we can see the image corpus, and the user can, it, remember the goal for the user is to try to make sense of what's going on in here. So they're sorting uh, hot dogs, tweezers, and then using pre-clustering based off the proximity, uh, the system will automatically uh, rearrange uh, the images toward what it thinks are similar to where the user sorted. So you can see down there where the animals are. The system sort of moved all of the images that it thinks was uh, similar to that down into that corner. And so in addition to this uh, sort of free flow and clustering, um, SharpSore also has the ability to create groups, automatically uh, uh, sort groups based off of user-defined um, groups. So here the user is creating this group of these tweezers um, they're creating a group of these animals. And then they're going to make another group of these hot dogs. And you see right here, what the system using is few shot learning is automatically populating those groups with images that it thinks is similar to the user selected images. So you can see in here, here's all the things that the system thought were similar to these tweezers. And here are all of the images that it thought were similar to these animals. And so, um, so in, in short, so SharpSore is sort of designed uh, to allow end users to drive the system toward uh, the desired functionality um, through these interface features. And so, um, my role over the summer was to do user research on the system, uh, to do the initial studies. They brought me in because I do research on trust, and they were interested in how people could trust and rely on the system, which was kind of odd, because I don't think people can trust machine learning. Um, you can argue with me about that later on. Uh, but, um, so the team was aware that SharpStore would likely present some serious challenges for user understanding and design, given its novel functionality. Uh, but due to the national security space in which the lab in this particular project uh, was situated at the time, my IRB was never approved. So, no users. Uh, <laughs> I was in IRB purgatory for the whole entire summer, so that was terrific. Uh, so what is a user researcher supposed to do without users, right? They want me to improve the user usability of the system, uh, but there's no users. So given this uh, dilemma, I turn to heuristic evaluation. So for those unfamiliar, um, a heuristic evaluation is a an formal expert evaluation technique that relies on a series of heuristics. Um, these are sort of broad general rules of thumb that you can apply to aid in decision making regarding 
uh, usability, and interface design. And so uh, these initial 10 heuristics and the evaluation technique were invented by Nielsen and Moloch in the 1990s, and since then have been adapted to uh, various domain-specific uh, heuristics, as they call them. Uh, there are heuristics for ambient displays, there are heuristics for interactive televisions, what's an interactive television? This is before uh, Roku and all of that stuff was out. Uh, ubiquitous computing and visual analytics. And so, um, here are the initial 10 heuristics designed by Nielsen and Moloch. And remember, these were designed for uh, standard like graphical user interfaces in the, in the 90s, when web applications were first coming out, and that kind of stuff. Um, and so for me, um, you know, looking at these heuristics and trying to apply them to SharkSoar um, was difficult, uh, given that the underlying interaction paradigm behind these heuristics um, is often direct manipulation. So direct manipulation is this idea that uh, objects of interest uh, for the user should be visible and interactable in a, a simple uh, manner, and directly analogous to how the user might uh, interact with an object in real life. So that's why it's called direct manipulation. Um, however, um, since Shunksword relies on this very involved sort of machine learning interactions, its underlying functionality, much of its underlying functionality cannot be directly manipulated. Um, so SharkSoar as a system, for instance, is going to evolve as it receives uh, user feedback, which uh, is in fact going to make its behaviors difficult to predict, which is going to violate, you know, heuristics one and three, right? Those, that's a big no-no. Um, also, the evolution is also going to make this uh, system not necessarily intuitive or clear, which is going to problematize this uh, heuristic uh, two and four here. Um, and so, my challenge, you know, beyond sort of um, the, the, the challenges with directly applying these heuristics, um, essentially they're sort of missing the point of what Sharksoar is about, right? Sharksoar's interaction model is much, is, can be described as such here uh, by Dudley Christensen. It's an um, interactive machine learning type system, right? Where the interface, the Sharksoar canvas is this interface that we're looking at here. And through its functionality of having users be able to draw, drag the images and pre-cluster the images on the canvas and create automatic groups is really providing this opportunity for these co-adaptive interactions back and forth between the user and the model, right? So given that, uh, given this interactive machine learning model um, that, that's underlying shock source functionality, um, you know, I was sort of drawn to uh, thinking about what would a set of heuristics look like to achieve uh, what uh, Sleeban has talked about uh, an interaction model, an interaction paradigm that seeks to enable uh, everyday users to explore model space through trial and error and driving the system toward an intended behavior, right? So it's, so what would, what would, what could, uh, what would a set of sort of heuristics look like to support this type of interaction model is what I was trying to get to. And so I took a stab at doing that, um, and what I did is I read a couple of interactive machine learning papers, and I sort of extracted the, the most salient design guidelines from these, the usability challenges, challenges, and the primary interaction techniques that were described as crucial to these IML interactions. I grouped this extracted information into categories based off of similarity. Um, and this is the key part for heuristic evaluation, is translating this stuff into action statements for heuristic evaluation procedures. So, I mean, you know, the papers that I'm reading are very long and they're very well written, but, you know, they, they're not, you know, snappy. Like, I need to be able to look at this as a list and say, okay, this, this interface feature is not, you know, we're, uh, is not supporting this heuristic and we need to fix this, right? So I translated these into these action statements. I sort of compared these and contrasted them with Nielsen's, the original 10. And I iterated and refined action statements into uh, 10 potential heuristics. Uh, and so I grouped them into these three categories. These are the 10, where the first three talk about um, what's important for model input. Uh, the four through six uh, talk about user feedback. And then seven through 10 are particularly about um, particular interaction, um, interaction design considerations. 
And so um, these are, you know, very, these are, this is a proposal. Uh, I haven't formally evaluated these. Uh, this is just sort of my, my attempt at um, thinking about if there are some general set of principles that can be applied to systems like Shark Store, right, that I can, that you could use before you even have any interaction with users that might be able to inform how you would make usability decisions. And so I think this is sort of important to um, think about because if we think about like the history of human computer interaction and graphical user interfaces, the ways in which these have sort of become ubiquitous and the success of human computer interaction is sort of this, the way that we have been able to, um, through uh, usability practices and uh, interaction design principles have been able to standardize the way that people interact with interfaces. But the question, the sort of open question is, is can we do that with the systems like Sharpsword, with the systems that we have seen in the previous three talks? And I'll end there. Um, I have um, individual slides that describe each of those heuristics, so if any of them pop out to you, um, I can go to them. is really just to say that, um, again, like with Sharksor, um, you know, a rich sort of user, user, user centric feedback for Sharksor would be, for instance, like if the user created, you remember the groups that we, that we saw, the three groups, right? If the user, you know, takes an image out of that group, right, like, hey, actually, you know, this you should the, the model should re, should should you know refresh and consider this as not being uh, a part of this group right but it's also not a part of the other group so maybe at that point the image is removed from the corpus right so it's it interactions like that right and you said seven the only comment on that is sometimes the word natural is not very well defined in some examples. So it could be a little bit misinterpreted sometimes. Right. That's, that's the right, right. So remember, these are broad general rules of thumb. So they're in, in any any situation, just like the original 10 heuristics, not all of them are going to apply, and there's this room for back and forth in the conversation. They're not commandments, they're suggestions. So you, there's a there's going to be you know some interpretation for each of them. Maybe just a very short follow-up question on the feature. If you go back to uh, Heuristic 6, you see a little bit the problem because originally feedback was meant to be, of course, it's a feedback given from the system towards the user, but now it's vice versa. So it's very important to, um, to be careful with the wording and uh, the meaning of feedback in this, uh, this sense. Mm -hmm. Just as just comment, because originally Schneider and Code, they said feedback is what the system gives, provides to you as a human being, and not what you provide to the machine learning algorithm to improve it, for example, to improve the policy. So it's uh, good to, to make clear which kind of feedback you actually need. But, you know, for me, this was, you know, you know Shark Store is very much so in the spirit of, you know, that original definition of interactive machine learning, I feel like. Um, and so this, these heuristics are sort of, like I, I talked to somebody at Google who, um, you know, is very much so 
um, against the idea of the user having this very involved like interaction with models. Like our users don't want to do that. Like we want to make stuff easy. Like the stuff that you're talking about. Like you know we would never want our users to have to do this stuff. And it sounds cool, but this is something that seems like it's going to be for a very particular like use case of you know this uh, really involved interaction with the model. Um, so. Yeah, I, I would say um, to answer that, I think it's going to be more specific to those sort of intense interactions with a system like Sharsor as opposed to more general stuff. 